and you're on. Welcome to Student Equity and Academic Achievement. I am Jason E. Williams, and this is a PowerPoint presentation of the Masters in Education of Teaching 655. The class title is Leadership Impact Seminar, the years 2015. The goal of this presentation is to give you a brief guide on how to guide certain students, and particularly minority students. So let's go take a quick ride through these power slides. Can you click the next button, please? Okay. Now, many of you are asking on the school board right now, what is the issue that I'm bringing to the company and the board as well? The minority students are performing at a low standard level, and the students along with parents and the community have become concerned, and they simply want change. Now, it is, it is very clear that the institution I work at has a low performance with the minority students. The test scores, the students are performing at a low level, and now the community is concerned because a lot of the minority students at the school and institution that I work at are dropping out. A lot of the community members and parents are complaining that Several of the teachers don't understand that several of the minority students come from certain demographic locations. Some of these students have single mothers. Many of these students might have single mothers who are uneducated. In the location that a lot of these minority students live in, it is crime ridden, gangs, so when these young children are saying that the parents are, excuse me, when these young children and students are saying that basically that the teachers are not connecting with them, we're going to have to do something about it. And that's what this presentation is basically all about. So come rock with me for a bit, please. You know, one of the main things that we're going to have to do now is a uh, create a task force. We're going to have to utilize the teachers. We're going to have to utilize the community board members, the parents, along with the staff. Because the goal in this whole process of student equity is that we want to develop leaders in America. We want to develop scientists, doctors, teachers, lawyers, educators to lead America into a whole new world. Next slide, please. All right, thank you. All right, so minority students in academic equity. Now, a lot of you might ask, what does academic equity mean? Well, we learned that George Bush implemented an act called No Child Left Behind. And it implemented certain standardized testing beyond what they would call the SAT in certain things. So when No Child Left Behind got initiated, what it forgot to bring to the table is that many of these kids who are minorities and come from certain demographic backgrounds might not be educated and prepared like someone who comes from a dual parent household, who both parents work, a uh, blue collar job. So a lot of these minority students are disadvantaged. Not naturally, but the situation that they are born in. And once again, our goal as educators and leaders and teachers in America is, regardless of race, ethnicity, or creed, or a person's economic status, we wanna be able to teach each child and student and develop them so they can go out into the world and become a great leader. So uh, this is the plan that we're bringing forth. Okay, 
We say many minority students come from severe and extreme backgrounds that causes them to deal with issues inside and outside of the classroom that most other students won't have to deal with. You talk about kids who possibly might not have parents who can provide them with pencils, utensils, clean clothes. Uh, many parents of uh, minorities, their parents didn't go to college. They might have been high school dropouts themselves. So they can't even help their child when it comes to their homework. So now the minority student comes to school ill-prepared, not on purpose, but they're just born in a situation to where us as teachers have to step up to the plate. Okay? So, uh, throughout getting this master's degree, we studied Reeves. And uh, he highlights that the demographic information is very important and should be always presented to the school district and we must create an accountability system. With the accountability system, it's creating a staff that we're going to make sure that every single student is account accounted for. We're going to make sure there's progress reports. We're going to make sure that we're talking to the parents. We're going to make sure that the minority students have a voice on campus. And we're going to make sure that the community is involved, the parents, staff, and the leaders on campus and part of the organization are involved. Now, one of the things of an effective accountability system is collecting data and information. But we mustn't just collect data on a person's ethnicity, race, or gender. We have to go a little bit deeper. And that's the first goal that Reeves states. He states that the first goal on assessing a student's achievement levels is uh, not just based off of standard testing, but uh, based off of the child or the student's learning development. Now this goes into, we have to learn that each student goes at his or her own pace. Next slide, please. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Excuse me. All right. So now we're at the initial assessment. The first and mo most important element towards resolution of the issue that we have with the minority students is addressing the issue. Let, let's rewind that for a second. The initial assessment. In the first few slides, I taught you and provided you with information about the problem and information on how to solve the problem with our minority students within the institution. But the first key element we must first understand is acknowledging that there is a problem. So much today in the American education system and in American society, we seem to tend to ignore certain issues and brush them to the side. Well, us as leaders in the new world, we must start admitting and acknowledging that there is an issue. And us being leaders in the new world of America, we must start creating systems and methods to make each student in America the best person he or she can be in this new global market of education. So now that we're recognizing a child's position, let me get out of your way so you can read it. We stay here that uh, recognizing the child's position is learning their styles and strengths, their weaknesses, accomplish about, accomplish, accomplishing things that they're possibly not taught that they can actually accomplish. Because now we're learning that several minority students are taught that they are sometimes worthless. So now we're learning that the community and the minority students are feeling that the teachers do not care, so now it's become the norm for minority students to perform at a low level. It has now become the norm for minority students to fail and become high school dropouts. 
Well, us as leaders of the new world, we're going to change that. So uh, one of the initial assessments, like I uh, gave you in the PowerPoint slide, is uh, in the form of an essay. Introduction, our review of past exams, our placement tests. And uh, I tend to disagree with a lot of the placement tests, but I can agree that regardless of a person's age, each student develops at different rates. So we're definitely going to have to change the American education system because we see that uh, certain children develop at certain rates. Okay, next slide, please. Now, this is just a little quick uh, graph that I wanted to show you, the high rate of uh, young minority kids, whether they come from single parent households, low income households, a crime or gang ridden area, or they come from foster care. The dropout rate is outrageous. So when we're dealing with minority students, we have to take into account where these students come from. Are their parents of low income? Did their parents graduate from high school or did their parents graduate from college? And many of these students are adopted in foster care. Next slide, please. All right. Now, in order to solve this problem, we have to have an answer. And it is evaluation of the problem and how to solve it. You guys are asking me over and over right now, Jason, you've addressed the problem, but how are we going to solve it? Well, I gave it to you. It's a new account accountability system. The new accountability system has changed the landscape of the education in America. Under the old system, a lower level of achievement was expected of children from lower income houses, especially minority students. The new system is truly a change and it will allow minority students equity and equal opportunity and a fair education. The next step would be Right here, developing a team, assembling a team, assembling a team that can contribute to the common goal of our educational institution. We can create a task force of students, board members, parents, staff, community members, and organizations. And let me take a step back right here. So we're here. And last but not least, teacher student development. Student development is the minute we originally assess and identify and classify what a student may require and formulate a team around that particular student, eventually forming an a, a actual team around a group of other students who are similar. Now, when we speak of teacher development, we're speaking of the teacher learning basically several elements on how to lead the classroom, and we'll get into that later. But like we said, this is a, this is a brief summary on how we make sure that minority students receive proper equity and uh, equal rights in education. Next slide, please. And this is the conclusion of student equity and academic achievement with minority students. Now, we have to understand and recognize that communication is key. We have to learn to develop teams. We have to learn to develop certain seminars, after school programs for these minority students. We have to create uh, pamphlets to make sure that the parents get things. You have to get the parents' numbers back to school night. We have to get the community involved. We must make sure that no child is left behind. Last but not least as well, one of the things that I will also recommend to the school board is using quantitative data, which is science, 
dealing with math and facts. Then qualitative data, when we measure things off of a person's mood, how they interact with certain students. So we must utilize everything and bring all the elements in education to make the American society and new world a better place. I am Jason E. Williams, and I hope that you truly enjoy my PowerPoint presentation, National University. And uh, last slide, please, for the bibliography. And we're always going to always give reference. I enjoyed this seminar, and I enjoyed this last class. Uh, D. Reeves, Accountability in Action, a Blueprint for Learning Organizations. Chad McGuire, Lecture 4A, which I retrieved from the database from National University. Douglas B. Reeves, Accountability in Action, once again, a Blueprint for Learning in an Organization was a great book that I, I truly love. And uh, I just want to say I enjoyed this course. I'm Jason E. Williams. I hope that you uh, learned a few things about student equity and academic achievement. See you soon. Peace.